it's going out tonight. Hi, welcome to the Late Night Big Breakfast. Fantastic to have you with us again, the whole nation joining us. Do you know, at the moment, you can't go five minutes without people talking about the Yeah, we'll just hold it there. As you know, we love getting your mail on, this, on the show, your feedback, your faxes, your emails, etc. And here's a letter that comes from John and Timaru. He writes, hi, guys. Sort of enjoying the show, but I think your guests are a little average. Well, John, you can just go fuck yourself because we think they're, they're quite good. So we'll just leave it there. Well, joining us on the couch now is Professor Jack McLaughlin. Jack, welcome to the show. Yeah. Now, Jack, you're a university professor and you've been doing a study into the brain, the neurological changes in the ageing brain of New Zealanders. That's right, the, the effects of ageing on the cognitive brain function. Mm -hmm. Basically, we look at uh, three different mm -hmm. parts, the working memory and the associated memory functions and the attention spans. Those are the, the three areas that we really studied. In it's detail. amazing how different um, different people can be, different emotions, different sexes can be. Like, you could argue that um, men tend to focus on more detail um, on certain things. Women tend to be a little bit more... Uh, we, we use our brains differently, I think, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, did you find that in your research? Oh, well, it, it was mainly sort of ageism uh, uh, generally, but uh, an interesting point that you brought up there, because one of our studies was on the testosterone levels, testosterone levels of males and females, mm. and how that affected cognitive brain functions. And intelligence. Mm. And, 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 and amazingly enough, that males who scored the highest on testosterone levels were the lowest on cognitive uh, okay. brain functions. So what yeah. you're saying there then is that, um, in, in general terms, uh, women are, are less intelligent than men. Is this is what's coming across in the study? Um, again, I'm not sure the facts would support that. Uh, I don't think we could be definitive about, you know... You know, if, if, if I could or... liken it, Professor, to, you know, a, a car dashboard, for example. The brain? Right? The brain. Mm. Uh, and but both men and women have uh, the brain, the car dashboard, you know, and, and the woman has the same as us. She has the temperature gauge, yes. the petrol yeah. gauge, mm. the, the CD counter. player, All the, the rev counter, the, whistles. The, the cup holder, but she doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> well, and, yeah. of course, I forget to put petrol in it. <laughs> yeah. No, and obviously with, with the man's brain, say, their dashboard perhaps will probably just have the basics, the rev counter, perhaps a, a speedometer, a fuel gauge, obviously, mm. and um, we don't really need a nav band on that because we've got a sort of an innate sense of direction generally anyway. Yes, I, a better analogy might be um, the brain's like a motorway, and when it gets clogged, all the arterial roots get clogged as well. In a woman. And then the small ones get... Uh, not Well, not... Not necessarily. Or it could be argued that female intelligence is purely functional and doesn't operate at full capacity. If I might, I actually was handed by a researcher uh, for the show and it says here, many scientists beginning... Uh, no, sorry, that's the wrong bit. Uh, it is a fact that women tend to do better at school, university and in intelligence tests, but most experts believe that men are probably still smarter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's, that's this interesting. This is a lot. Interesting this is a lot. Um, would you agree? With... Well, uh... no, I might just interrupt you there, um, Professor. We're just going to go to informational. Hi. I lead a pretty active lifestyle, but fecal build-up in your undergarments, or skid marks, as the kids like to call them, can creep up on you at any time. But the new Fecal Shield from Banix offers you up to 25% more protection. Using polymer technology from NASA, the new Banix Fecal Shield identifies and absorbs even the most stubborn fecal buildup, offering you the ultimate in fecal protection. And the freedom to live your life the way you want to live. Well, welcome back to the Late Night Big Breakfast. Are women less intelligent than men? Well, our, our guest certainly seems to think so. Professor Jack McLaughlin, um, your research is certainly controversial. I mean, how do you quantify your results at, at this point? I mean, how, how do you... How's it been received out there? Uh, well, I... 
it's very nice to have this opportunity to actually talk about it because not many people are aware of the, uh, the difficulties that ageism faces in terms of cognitive brain uh, functions. But the just bring it back to say that the man-woman thing then, you're saying, and Jeremy, mm -hmm. we're looking at the, the, the female brain with respect to having babies. It's actually called baby brain, isn't it? That's right. That's, I that's believe actually, actually it's the central cortex. It's the central yeah. cortex, it's not just the lobes. It will, Jack might be able to back you up on that because, mm. and, that, and that will obviously go down right past through all that, that lactating part of the body, mm -hmm. etc. So I believe that the cortex is linked up. to the breasts and th some yeah. evidence suggests the vagina. In all seriousness, sorry, Professor, for, um, you know, when, when in, in previous ages, in the 1800s, when they were dealing with cognitive function, with mental disorders and mental deterioration, it was often suggested within, with women that the deterioration was linked vaginally. Hmm. It just yeah, but to bring it back to the central cortex, because of course males have a central cortex as well as females. And, uh, but, I'm it's not as but a men's as one is a man's one, isn't it? And yeah. a woman's one is a woman's cortex. Well, they, I guess in the female body it's a female one, and in the male body it's mm. the male one. That's yes, what I thought. Yeah. I, I must agree with you on that. That point, but as mm. far as our research is concerned, it, it's mainly the the functions of the brain and how age affects them. And, and woman, I, I'm not sure I could arrive at that. Uh, I just interrupt you there, Professor. That's about all we've got time for. Um, thanks for, for, for your your input. It's certainly controversial research, and all the best with it, um, Frank or Professor Frank. Uh, Jack, Jack, sorry. Um, McLaughlin. McLaughlin, thanks for coming on the show and enlightening us about the the man and and the woman's brain. Fantastic. We just need yeah. to go for a quick wee. Sorry, guys. Okay. Ah. Okay. Hey, Lee, where's Jason? We haven't seen him for ages. Here I am, fellas. You know, every now and then on the late night big breakfast, we get a very special treat. And boy, I can tell you we've got one right now. Would you please welcome the fantastic Candace? Joe Bennett, and we show you how to triple your income. Fantastic. Welcome back to the Late Night Big Breakfast. Welcome back to you, Jeremy. Welcome back to you, Jace. Welcome back to you, Jeremy, and welcome back to you, Actually, Lee. Well, welcome back to both of you. Well, welcome time. back to you, Jason and Jeremy, and in indeed, you, the viewer, welcome back. I've got to love you and leave you. I've got to go see Joe in, in, in the bookcase corner. It's you guys, surely. Thank you. Any calls for me? Uh, no. No? OK. Here's a little story I've been writing, Joe. Again, it's kind of for the Mills and Boone market, uh, that romantic... It's a sort of speciality for you, isn't teenage, it? Young teenage love. Uh, well, that's, in this case, they're, they're quite old. <clears throat> John read the note to himself over and over and over again. He hadn't heard from her for 16 years, and in that time, so much had happened. John had spent many years searching for that once elusive spark for another lover. It's boring, frankly, Lee. Actually, you've got to start... seize me. You've got to seize me okay. with the opening line. Okay. So how about starting a bit further on still? Okay. John had spent many years searching for that elusive spark of love, for another lover he could set his heart on once and for all. But alas, other than a short, passionate but selfish affair in a Moroccan prison, it was never meant to be. In a Moroccan prison. Aren't they sexually segregated, Moroccan prisons? I, I've got no idea, Joe. It's... I believe they are. Okay. So that implies a homosexual relationship. Uh, Joe, you read into what you like. Okay. okay. That relationship had hurt John physically, yes. Yeah. The, the thought of seeing her again frightened him. Could things ever be the same? And besides, so much water had gone under that bridge where John now lived. John didn't live under a bridge through choice. He simply refused to succumb to pressure from developers and move. So they built the four-lane toll bridge right over his house. John had always been a man of principle, but remaining in his house had been an ongoing battle 
that he paid for the price on a daily basis. We're losing the romantic element here a little bit, I think. Well, I think we have to get this out of the way because okay. he was paying the price on a daily basis, mainly due to legal fees and the fact that whenever he entered or left his own driveway, he had to pay the bridge toll. If you know what I'm saying, Joe? Yeah, it's... no, I understand all that, yeah. OK. I, I'm not sure it has its place in a romantic novel, but... OK. Uh, yeah. Then the doorbell rang. John would know that familiar ring anywhere, for it was his doorbell. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? But who was doing the ringing? I think it's that girl who he hasn't seen for 16 years. Could it be her? These rhetorical that's, questions that, are a little tedious. That's rhetorical. Are they a little tedious? No, that's, that, it's not supposed to be rhetorical. You just keep interrupting, so it's, it seems like it's rhetorical. No, no, it is rhetorical. Well, if you, if, if you weren't interrupting, it would be. Right, there's been three of them already in there. It's but you're answering thing. them, Joe, at the moment, if you know what I mean. Right. So, OK. Could it be her? The love of his life, standing at the threshold? John opened the door, and there before him was Laura. Like him, she had aged, and her once gargantuan breasts had clearly sagged with time. Yeah, Mills and Boone audience will love that. Moments later, John and Laura were tight in each other's arms, their legs entwined as they rolled around on John's bed in slow motion. Why in slow motion? Well, they decided they're in slow motion, Joe. They're, they're not spring chickens anymore. So much time had passed, but for that moment, other than Laura's breasts, it was as if for the past 16 years, time had stood still. Right. So obviously they, they've, yeah. they've obviously sagged like... Uh, yeah, like or, nobody's business, yeah, indeed. Or you probably call them sag like pramps. Sag like what? Party balloons that have been left in the sun for a couple of weeks. I should have written that in there. OK. Well, it's not too late, is it? Well, a good point. It's not too late. OK. Yeah. John and Laura were now naked, and John's moist fingers fondled her nipples with the precision and dexterity of somebody attempting to tune in a shortwave radio. That's exquisite. And then as darkness fell, Laura, with eyes closed, felt a warmth emanating from her loins. She felt a warm glow all around, and then, in the heat of the moment, she <laughs> opened her eyes to see an incredible display of pyrotechnics erupting from... John's backside. She saw sparks, fireballs, and whistling skyrockets shooting from his buttocks. So he shoved a firework. Gen that's right. He's, he's been trying to re rekindle the fires of desire, which I'm going to call it now. Right. And he's literally and he's taking it literally it. with yes. a firework. Yes, but also it, right. It's immensely erotic, isn't it? Yes. Technically, at this time of year, John shouldn't have had access to these kinds of pyrotechnics, but fortunately for him, he had met a little Asian man at an inner city food hall who could get what he needed. Right. And it was this man who had lit the fuses and was now standing by with a bucket of water should the curtains catch on fire. So he was there. Yeah, of course he is, Joe. Right. Um, as erotic literature goes, it's hard to beat, really. As it? the last of the more expensive Roman candles pumped skyward from John's backside and the room became engulfed in coloured smoke and the erotic smell of phosphorus and sulphur, Laura gave herself to John completely. John suffered only minor second-degree burns to his buttocks, but he was once again living in the moment. And though it wasn't cheap, he had managed to rekindle the passions of fire between them. That's great. I oh, will just leave it there, Joe. Just leave it there. Let it sink in for a moment with the with the audience. Thanks, Joe. Yes, been pleasure. Yeah. Remember to cross out those first thirty lines. Huh? Well, it's time now for. It's time now for money chat. So I went out into the real world to meet a new exciting business to see what they're up to financially. Tim, for the people that aren't as uh, in tune as I am, um, what is World Exchange? What do you do? Uh, world Exchange is a telecommunications company. We provide uh, IP voice services, voice and data services to the New Zealand market. So we're a niche provider in the IP space across residential, small business and corporate and government markets. Look, Tim, I'm just going to interrupt you. This is not really working for me at the moment. Brent, Brent this is not that comfortable for me. Is this how you normally do it? Well, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want to just swap, yeah. we wouldn't normally... I mean, that's a bit weird. Well, you Do you want me that here? One? Yeah, that'd be more like it. Just a bit more orthodox. Yeah, yeah, OK. OK. Oh, that's worse, actually. That's, that's no good either. No, that's bloody... No. Um, if you swap back... OK. Do you want me to turn right, around a bit? Oh, you're there. You're, you're right there. Yeah. OK. That's better. We have to share a whole lot of information with people. Look, no, look, I'm... I'm I'm really not comfortable with this either. It no. just doesn't feel right. Right, really? if I was given a massage or something, well, I'm not okay. Really? Um, so if we could maybe just try another system, if you've got any other ideas, we could maybe um, try them, okay? Yeah, just swap, sure. swap it right round, you know? Oh, cheers as well. Yeah, it's, yeah sorry, Tim. It's, okay, not, it's not your fault. It's just... Yeah, so I'll flip that. Yeah. Like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Tim. That's all we've got time for, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. That thanks was great. Thanks for coming over. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Thanks. 
Well, here we are once again. Welcome to Money Chat. Um, I'm going to go back a huge time in New Zealand, uh, indeed around the world, especially New Zealand, mid 80s. Huge time economically, right, New right, Zealand. Right, right. You're talking about the the crash of 1987. No, no, I'm talking about the Valco wallet. Oh, I, I see. Mean, that okay. was obviously okay. a big. I see. I see. A, a big time in New Zealand. Valco was big. Most people, you certainly would have been using a Valco mm. wallet, Jeremy, mm. Jace. I know you were. Mm. Um, I was using a couple of them. Is the Valco wallet a metaphor, if you like, for how we were living back then? A more of a flexible, uh, rip, rip, laissez fair society, yeah. quickly rip it open, making a big noise about it as we do it. Mm. <laughs> I've got all this cash. Yes, that's is a good that... point. Actually, yes, so... yes, it might be might be symbolic of the of the eighties. Okay. Uh, we've been talking Valco wallets. If you're just joining us here on Money Chat, the part of the show, Jeremy, where we talk everything finance, financial, economics, things like that. Where are we going with this? Where are we going financially, this country? What state are we in? Are we on the up? A lot of people are pretty positive about the market now, Jeremy, aren't they? Yeah, currently people seem quite quite optimistic. They, they're reporting that they are not too worried about their cash situation. They are reasonably happy, so... How do you measure that? How do you... Uh, Gauge. Uh, Gauge. Well, How do you gauge it? Well, most... The primarily you do surveys, you ask people, are they worried about money, are they not mm -hmm. worried about money, and then you look at what the responses are, and currently it seems people are saying that they are not particularly concerned, so that's good news. It's a good thing. Professor okay. Chowdhury, confidence is high. When's the bubble going to burst? Good question. Uh, it's a very hard thing to say. I could say anything and... Uh, what well would you say, though, if you had to make a prediction? Oh, your prediction is as good as mine. I mean, at this point, I don't think... I think the bubble may not burst for, for, for a while. 2016? Was that four months? Third quarter, fourth quarter. So you're yeah, saying four or five months, months tops, a quarter maybe. I, I'm not, but what, what colour is blue? Yeah, yeah, by December, right, yeah, the yeah. bubble should, could burst in your opinion. Could, could yes. So yes, you're going to stand by that. I would, no, look at me. So you're still standing by the statement that the whole economy is going to crash within three months? I would, no, I'm not betting money on it, uh, but <laughs> but I, it's, it's anyone's guess. Fact. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us, yeah, Professor. Sure, it's been sure, fantastic sure, hearing your thoughts sure. again here on Money Chat. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've got to go to a break. But in the meantime, ponder this. Is it OK to be sexually attracted to children's TV presenters? The results may surprise you. We'll have the results after the break. Coming up, why is Jason so annoyed? And we take a look at the weather in your region. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Welcome back to The Late Night Big Breakfast. You're here. Welcome back, indeed. With... Sorry, sorry, you can't. Welcome back to the Late Night Big Breakfast. We're here with Alistair Helm, who's talking property. Uh, Alistair... Well, I might just interrupt you there, Jeremy. Accidental spills and stains such as coffee, wine, ketchup, even human and pet body fluids can soak in and damage your furniture. So if you want the best in fabric protection, we recommend Soil Guard. What's an acceptable rate, um, Alistair, for, for a real estate agent to charge you to sell your house? In your mind? A good question, Jason. Oh, that's a, a good, good question, Jason. Que and it's one, you Jeez, know, that's that a good people question. have a completely misguided view of this business. Everyone thinks question. that it's going to cost you about 3 4 percent. Mm. But it really shouldn't cost you much more than 3 We should probably come up with another mm. question. Um, yeah, this um, and also, you, you kind of say, well, what do they do for that money? Yeah, That's a lot of money when the average house is... Getting on for four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. twelve grand. Alistair, let's talk about diversification. Mm. I know that's a real buzzword at the moment. It certainly uh, is. Mm. Rural versus commercial versus your, your urban, your urban, urban. Uh, type mm. of portfolio. Is it important to to diversify your property portfolio to guard against any ups yeah. and downs in the market? It's a principle of diversification. You you shelter yourself from the ravages of one of those particular markets going off offline. <laughs> yeah, I mean, rural always mm -hmm. has more risk because mm -hmm. there's less demand. Urban is good because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. what they call a liquid market. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like shares. A lot of people buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And urban's mm -hmm. good, but rural is mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. higher risk because mm -hmm. people don't buy rural mm -hmm. that often. 
Mm. You know, people mm. don't change hands in farms that often, do they? And it's the same, I guess, principle with, with uh, relationships. If you can have an urban relationship, uh, a rural relationship mm. and a commercial relationship mm. uh, with mm. a female, you generally diversify your portfolio across the board. Mm. If one yep. of them goes off the rails or off the thing, you can always rely on the other two mm. or the one, or you can bring them mm. all together in some kind of uh, polygamous situation, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, I'm interested, the commercial one is not conjuring up any images for me. Do you have a picture of that? A commercial oh, a present, relationship. That'd be a prostitute, that's... Mm. Oh, sorry, mm. gosh, mm. how naive. Hey, well, is that part of the show again? Let's look at the weather with Tim Bat. Tim, what's happening? Guys, I'm here at Auckland Zoo. A new baby penguin from Taupo has just been transferred. Tim, and in a couple... Tim, it's Taupo. Okay. okay? Taupo. Hey, yeah, hold on, oh, what are you wearing? This is a penguin suit. Yeah, no, but it's not really relevant to the weather, really, is it? Part of the celebrations that are happening here at Auckland Zoo. Look, mate, the... um, I've got to be honest, I was never really a big fan of this weather thing anyway. It's just adding a bit of colour yeah, well, to yeah, the story. It's clearly pre recorded. I think people know that. Do you think so? Yeah. Sorry, Tim, we're going to leave it there. And um, to be honest, I'll just see if you can integrate yourself somewhere else on the show if you can. Thanks, mate. Yeah, leave it there. Take him off the, take him off the screen. Take him off the screen. Tim, either, either you leave the screen now, we're going to take you off. Make him, no. Make your no, mind up. Either no, you no. get off the screen, or we're no, going to take you off ourselves. Leave the screen. Let's just take him off. Take, take him off. off. Take him off the screen. He's, wear, he's wearing jandals. He's take, wearing I jandals. See it. For take him off the screen. We don't want a wacky weather guy. Okay. See, that's better. Look, um, Jeremy, Jace, and it's fantastic to have you on the show again. Talking real estate, we love it. It's a it's a favourite part of the show. A lot of people write in all the time saying how much they love this section. You know, for, for that kind of impact already, uh, I think it's very very special. We've got a lot more coming up in the show. Don't go away. See you soon. No, actually, Lee, we don't. That's pretty much the end of the show. This show is brought to you by Bad X, bringing you the ultimate in fecal protection. Thanks for watching, New Zealand. See you next time. It's going on tonight! Hey, and thank you, New Zealand on air.